Hi everybody. By popular request, today we are going to provide you with a structured approach to the patient who is in the intensive care unit or maybe in the progressive care unit that has an arrhythmia and you are asked to get involved and help manage the patient with an arrhythmia. The first thing that my team and I would tell you to do is to remember to use this. It's very important that you keep this involved and engaged at all times when man managing an arrhythmia. So the first question that you should ask yourself when you're approaching this kind of a patient is, is this patient unstable or is this patient stable? And so we'll help you with definitions. An unstable patient in this particular context is a hypotensive patient, a systolic blood pressure less than 100. The next question that you have to ask yourself is, is, is this patient unstable uh, because of the arrhythmia, or is that some other problem that's going on that is making the patient hypotensive and the patient in response to that is developing an arrhythmia, remembering that cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. So if you believe that this patient is unstable for other reasons, like they're having a pulmonary embolism, they're having sepsis, they're bleeding, treat those other things first. Don't get caught up in the arrhythmia. Classic example is if this patient has sinus tachycardia because they're hypovolemic for whatever reason. So if, for the sake of this video, you're being asked to manage a patient who is unstable primarily because of the rhythm, then you should start deciding what your next step should be in terms of terminating that rhythm. If the patient is hemodynamically unstable and it is because of an arrhythmia, that patient will require electrical cardioversion and you need to get help. It is beyond the scope of this video to go over how to electrically cardiovert someone and you should work with someone who knows how to do it. If the patient has an arrhythmia and they are hemodynamically stable, then you have time to think. And so your focus there should be get a 12 lead electrocardiogram, see if that helps you. And you should then be able to divide this up into narrow complex arrhythmias and wide complex arrhythmias. Usually, for the sake of this video, we're talking about tachyarrhythmias. We're not really addressing bradyarrhythmias. The common rhythms that we see in our intensive care unit primarily are tachyarrhythmias. So narrow complex tachyarrhythmias include very common rhythms like atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and other supraventricular tachyarrhythmias like the all-important AV nodal reentrant tachycardia. It's important at this point to think of a drug like adenosine. And adenosine can take one of these supraventricular tachyarrhythmias and slow it down, such as atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. And if it's AV nodal reentrant tachycardia, adenosine will break it. And it's important to remember that when you're giving the adenosine, that you give it quickly, that you follow it quickly with a flush. And as I was trained, that you take the two syringes, one with the drug and one with a flush, and put a stopcock in between and hook it up to the most proximal catheter you can find and go you know, ch -ch -ch, to quickly give the adenosine to give it the optimal chance to help share with you what's going on with the underlying arrhythmia. Very commonly, we will see atrial fibrillation in the intensive care unit. And your focus there should be on two questions. Well, there's three, but two are the most important at that moment. Rate control, rhythm control, and anticoagulation. Anticoagulation, hyperacutely, is something you can put aside for a moment. But rate control is what we really focus in on in general for a patient who has new onset atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response. You should look quickly through the history to see if this patient has gone in and out of this rhythm, or is this something really brand new? And it's important that you're focusing in on treating the rhythm while you're also trying to figure out what triggered it, even if the patient's hemodynamics are stable. The common drugs that we use to help manage these arrhythmias include AV nodal blockers, such as diltiazem and metoprolol, 
Digoxin is often brought up in the setting of atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response. You can use it. You can load a patient with digoxin if they are hemodynamically unstable from atrial fibrillation. It's an old drug. It's not a particularly great drug. It's got a narrow therapeutic index, but it can be used. Amiodarone is a wonderful drug to think about in this context, but I wanted to share with you how to think about it. Amiodarone, for a patient who may have developed new onset atrial fibrillation, if you're starting to slow the rate with one of your avionodal blockers, you could consider adding the amiodarone intravenously to help the patient revert back to their previous presumably normal sinus rhythm. So it's important that you keep that in mind why we're using the drug at that point. If the patient, uh, and again, it's very important as you're treating the atrial fibrillation, I can't emphasize enough, try to figure out why you think this happened. Is there a surgical reason? Did this patient aspirate? Is there a pulmonary embolism? Is there a surgical complication that's coming up? In the setting of the intensive care unit, if you see a patient with a wide complex tachycardia, you need to remember that that doesn't necessarily mean it's a ventricular arrhythmia. It could be supraventricular with aberrancy. And again, a 12-lead EKG should help you figure that out. You won't be able to tell that very easily from the rhythm on the monitor. Again, in general, even if it is a ventricular arrhythmia and the patient is hemodynamically stable from it, Using a drug like amiodarone is still a very good choice to help you control the rate while you're getting help from cardiology, electrophysiology, etc. But I think the, the, one of the most important things that I've seen, especially in patients who may be coming in from progressive care, is to remember that something caused this, something triggered this, and so you're, you've got to stay focused on treating the rhythm problem, but remembering why did this happen in the first place, especially in a unit outside of a cardiology-focused unit where most of the time it's not primarily a rhythm problem. Something has happened that caused it. It's one of the most challenging parts of critical care is perhaps a patient who's intubated, who has sepsis, and they go in and out of rapid atrial fibrillation, and you can cardiovert them and get them back into sinus, but they'll only stay in sinus for a few beats because they're so tachycardic as part of their sepsis. And you know, even with appropriate volume resuscitation, they may need it to get adequate cardiac output that they will not stay in it. So it's a very challenging situation. So to summarize our approach on this short video of how you should think about at two in the morning when you're called for a patient with an arrhythmia in or near our intensive care unit, the first step is, is the patient stable or unstable? And by stable or unstable, we mean, is their blood pressure less than 100 or not? If their blood pressure is unstable, you're going to need to get help. That patient more than likely will end up going to an intensive care unit if they're not there already. And they may require cardioversion, but remember that the patient may be developing this arrhythmia because something else is going on and you should try and treat that first. The epitome of that is this patient has sinus tachycardia because they're bleeding from somewhere or they're developing early sepsis from somewhere. So, or, so stay, stay focused on constantly trying to think through what else is going on that's triggering this arrhythmia. If it turns out that the patient has a stable new tachyarrhythmia, then try to say, is this narrow complex or wide complex? If it's narrow complex, do you believe this is atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter or some other form of supraventricular tachyarrhythmia? Consider drugs like adenosine to help you figure out precisely what's going on. If you believe this is atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response, consider drugs like diltiazem and metoprolol to help slow the AV node. There are exceptions, which is beyond this video where you shouldn't use it, but in general, it's safe. Consider working with your colleagues amiodarone if it's a new onset atrial fibrillation problem and you're treating what may have triggered the rhythm, but you want to get and keep the patient in sinus rhythm, amiodarone can be extremely helpful. And again, if it turns out that the patient has a ventricular, a true ventricular tachyarrhythmia, amiodarone is also a very good drug to use. We hope you found this video to be helpful. And remember, be strong, stay focused. See you later.